Hello board game brothers and sisters, I'm Adam Singer and welcome to another episode where I'll be letting you know of all the board games launching on Kickstarter and GameFound over the next week. If you're new to the channel, we do this every week going over all the upcoming campaigns, so if you want to stay up to date, this is definitely the place to be, and feel free to subscribe down below. But before I get started, I do like to go over some new announcements and discoveries I just found out about over the past week. And I just have one that I want to go over, and this is a new game coming from Pandasaurus. And this one is called The Fox Experiment. And why I'm mentioning this one is because this is going to be co-designed by Elizabeth Hargrave, who created games like Wingspan, which were a huge hit. And I know a lot of people liked that game, so if you like that game, you might like this one. This one is quite a bit different because it's a roll and write, but this one is coming out in September, I believe September 6th. Speaking of September, if you want to stay even more up to date with all the games that are to come, definitely go ahead and check out Board Game Cozy channel because he puts out a video at the start of each month going over the entire month and letting you know of all the games that we know about so far. I feel like he just put out his video for August but we're already near the end of the month so he'll have another one out really soon going over the month of September. He also has a ton of other really excellent content and he's a great guy. You'll definitely want to check him out and subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. But that's all I have for an intro so let's check out the campaigns. And the first campaign we have launches on August 23rd, and this one's called Sea of Legends Vengeance of the Empires. And this is an expansion to the game Sea of Legends, which plays one to five players, takes about 40 to 160 minutes to play. And this is an open world pirate themed game where players are gonna be working competitively to try and become the most notorious pirate. Players will each be starting out with their own unique captain and a ship that they can upgrade throughout the game, but players will also have a specific love interest as well as a nemesis that's specific to them. And as you're playing the game, you'll be able to take one movement and one action on your turn and the action will be related to where you are currently on the map so some locations might give you some different options and places to visit or you might run into different events that prop up throughout the game like different creatures or enemies or crews that you can go fight or interact with in different ways and you'll be able to do all that as well as some other things like raiding ports and finding and burying treasure all to raise your notoriety but one of the main ways that you can spend your action in the game is to perform one of your adventures and you're going to have three different adventures that are available to you. There's your captain's adventure, your lover's adventure, and your nemesis adventure. And in order to go on these different adventures, you're going to be using the companion app. And the app will give you a bit of narrative for that adventure. And then it's going to give you some options based on what happened. And then based on the outcome of that option, it's going to affect the game in various ways. So the decisions you make not only change the outcome of the story, but can also change the entire landscape of the game. And after you resolved all the effects of that stage of the adventure, the app will instruct you to put a token on another location on the map so that if you want to continue that adventure, you'll have to visit that location and then select it from the app again in order to move forward. And this new expansion is going to be adding a whole new set of chapters where the Spanish Empire is looking to re-establish their hold over the colonies and France has marshaled their forces to expand their own presence to ensure their access to the goods in the land. But strange forces have also awoken from the depths of the waters and you're hearing rumors of a ghost ship known as the Flying Dutchman and rumblings of a kraken that's causing havoc across the water. And the player with the highest notoriety at the end of the game wins the game. And if this one sounds interesting to you, I have links in the description below. Also launching on August 23rd, we have Tail Story. And this plays two to four players and takes about 20 to 45 minutes to play. And this is a campaign that I did cover in the past, so I'll just go ahead and roll that footage for you now. Tail Story and plays two to four players and takes about 20 to 45 minutes to play. And in this game, players are taking on the roles of different pets and you're each gonna have your own deck of 15 event cards. And you're gonna be doing whatever you can to try and get through your deck as quickly as possible because each time you do that, you get to remove one card as an achievement and then you reshuffle your deck and and start over. Whoever reaches for achievements first wins the game. Space Line, and this plays two to four players and takes about 30 to 60 minutes to play. And this is a really interesting competitive dueling card game. And the main thing that differentiates this from a lot of other dueling games that I've seen is the way that the different dueling lanes are formed. Basically, there's a dueling lane between each player and the player adjacent to them. But then there's also a lane towards the center of the table where all players are a part of. And each turn in this game does happen simultaneously, so I think it will be quite snappy and quick. But there will be an active player that basically decides decides which lanes will activate first. And each turn players get to assign their seven cards in their hand to the three different lanes that they have access to. The one to their left, the one to their right, and the one towards the center. This will essentially put your card into combat and you're going to be trying to get the most strength in the different lanes in order to win that match. And the reason you want to win is so that nothing happens to you because every other player that loses within a lane is going to have damage inflicted on them. 
Each player is going to have a sort of defense token in each of the lanes that they're a part of, but then as soon as that takes any damage, it's going to get flipped to its damage side, and then any additional damage will get inflicted to that player's base. The game ends once all the other players' bases are destroyed, and the last player standing wins the game. But another neat aspect to this game is that players don't have to play all their cards into the different lanes. Instead, they can choose to play it into their own player board, and if they do that, that will allow them to activate an ability on their personal player board, with each of those abilities being different depending on which character's army you are playing as. In addition to their strength, each of the cards can also have different abilities on them as well, so this might dictate which cards you want to put into play and which ones you want to hold back, because some of them will be exhausted permanently while others might come back to your hand and you can also choose to keep cards in your hand and then use them as additional cards in the next round. This opens up a lot of different strategies for players to explore and I think it adds a lot of fun of trying to get the most out of your different abilities and the different abilities on the cards that you're able to play. The game also offers some really neat artwork with a sort of anime style, but all in all I think this is bringing something really unique to your table and if you are a fan of card battlers this is definitely one you'll want to check out. The campaign page also already has the rulebook on there, which I am a huge fan of. I'm not sure if this one will be going to Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia, but if it does, I'm sure that link will show up here on the campaign page, and it will definitely show up on the Shelf Clutter Discord, where we add all those links, so if you are interested in tabletop versions of games, or just getting notified of new games, definitely check out our Discord. A little bit of a random plug here in the middle of this game, but check out the Discord, it's really cool, and you can find more info on this game and many others. And the next campaign launching on the 23rd is called Cobble Critters, and this plays two players, it takes about 20 to 60 minutes to play, and this is a competitive card battler game. And in this game, players are playing as their own monster tamers, and you'll be able to optionally build your deck at the start of the game, or you can use a pre-made one, but there's essentially two different types of cards in the game. First, there's the critter cards, which are the main cards in the game, and these are going to have an attack, a defense, and a health value, as well as some special abilities, and each critter does have two upgraded forms, and you'll be able to upgrade them throughout the game game to make them even more powerful. And then there is the special cards, and these have powerful abilities, delayed or passive effects, or equipable items that you can assign to your various critters. And each player is going to have two rows in front of them that they can go ahead and play their cards into, and each of the critters will also have a range and a way that they can attack, and they'll only be able to attack other cards that are within their range. Winning battles allows you to gain crystals, and the first player to get enough crystals will win the game. But each turn, players will be refilling their hand up to six cards and then you'll be able to take two actions and there's a few actions that you can choose the first one is the summon action which allows you to put one of your critters into play the second action is the upgrade action which allows you to replace one of your critters with the next highest level of that critter if you have it in your hand the third action is a mine action and this will allow you to just exhaust one of your cards in order to gain a crystal and then the fourth possible action is the fight action and this is where you're going to choose one of your critters out on the board and then attack one of your opponent's critters that's within range each critter is going to have some sort of attack type and defense values to the different attack types, so you're going to want to make sure that you're attacking the critters that have the least resistance to your type of attack. There's also a bunch of free actions, like you can exhaust any critters in order to move them wherever you want in your play area, or you could play any number of special cards that you have in your hand, and you can also choose to discard as many cards as you want so that when you refill back up to your six cards on your following turn, you can get those ones out of your hand. And play continues like this until one player reaches the set amount of crystals, and then that player will win the game. And launching on August 25th, we have Inferno the Card Game. And this plays three to eight players. It takes about 30 to 90 minutes to play. And this is a competitive game where every player is trying to be the last player standing. And the way this game works is that on your turn, you can draw as many cards as you want from the main deck. And a lot of the cards in that deck are cards that will help you or hinder your opponents in various ways. But there is always a chance that you'll draw a card that will immediately end your turn, causing you to be unable to play any of the cards that you drew. And on top of that, there's also event cards that that can be drawn that can possibly kill you and you're going to want to use the cards that you have already in order to defend yourself from those cards or to turn the tables on your opponents. And as an engineer I'm very appreciative of their little flow diagram here where they go into all the different possibilities of a turn and also they provide a comprehensive list of the different cards that you can find within the deck. And the game continues with the players alternating their turns until there's only one player left and that player wins the game. And launching on August 26th, we have Atlas Lost Rise of the New Sovereigns. And this plays two to four players and takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play. And this is a competitive tech tree, resource management, and civilization game that's set in a world ruined by AI warfare. 
Players will be discovering lost technology and taking control of the new world, deciding where they want to go, what they want to focus on, and what they want to turn the world into. During setup, you're going to be choosing three out of five possible tech modules, and depending on the modules that you choose to include in the game, this is going to dictate what sorts of mechanisms are available, making each game very different from the last. Throughout the game, you're going to be using cards, collecting resources, and employing the tech that you've discovered in order to build up your own troops and gather fame faster than the players around you. The first player to score 30 points wins the game. I'm sorry that I don't have more info on this one. I did look around and I just really couldn't find anything, but the artwork looks amazing. The game looks really well put together. I wish I could say more on the gameplay, but it does look like one that a lot of people are looking forward to because it already has nearly 2,000 followers. So if that little bit of info has sparked your interest at all, I have links to this campaign in the description below and you can check it out once it launches, and I'm sure you'll find a ton of more info there. And those are all the campaigns I have for you this week, a pretty short week, and we're already at the end of the video, and this is normally the point where I do some sort of giveaway, and I do have some giveaways to announce, namely Trailblazers, which is just doing incredible on Kickstarter right now. But since it's been such a short week, I'm going to save this one for next week, so consider this one a little bit of a teaser, and come back next week if you want to enter in the giveaway for Trailblazers. So I'm just going to wrap up the video here after I announce the winner for last week's giveaway, and I'm just going to use this time now to attempt to get caught up on all the emails and comments over the past four weeks. Let's go ahead and draw the winner for last week's giveaway and this was a giveaway for a pledge for 535. And to draw a winner I use this fancy application here and all these extra names down here are bonus entries for my Patreon subscribers. If you like this sort of content and you want to help make this all just a little bit more sustainable for me, I have links to my Patreon in the description below and I truly appreciate the support. But let's go ahead and draw those comments and draw a winner. And the winner is Rob Bendig, and this is one of our Patreon subscribers, so congratulations Rob, I'll reach out to you and let you know that you won yourself a pledge for 535. Five. And that is all I have for you this week, so have a wonderful weekend, and as always, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, keep that shelf cluttered and the table full.